Well, good morning and welcome once again to the Morning Meditation with God radio ministry brought to you each morning at this same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And we'd like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in any, any and all of the services of the Midwest Church of Christ. Again, located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, we have our Sunday Bible School. And at 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study at prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible from the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do that. One is the Bible Correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study uh, that um, you can uh, uh, study. Someone will come and study the Bible right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774-3986. And uh, we'll uh, um, register uh, you today. In uh, other announcements, I want to remind uh, all of the uh, young people, um, 10 years of age and up, that this Friday, um, this Friday evening, the youth ministry will be having um, the Friday uh, night live. Amen. Uh, I know that uh, the young people will have a good time, um, and we pray to God that uh, many of you. We'll uh, have your young people out uh, um, to be a part of Youth Alive and the uh, youth ministry of the Midwest Church of Christ. We want to also remind uh, uh, the ladies that the ladies' Bible class will be meeting um this Sunday, the um, the the twenty, the nineteenth, and the twenty sixth, following the ten thirty uh, worship service. So keep that in mind, and make sure that you come over and come out and make plans to attend the ladies' Bible class, the young adult social. Calling all young adults of Midwest. Let's get together to know one another and to explore our relationship with God. Let's talk over lunch on Sunday, January the 26th, 2020, following the second service. Keep that in mind and uh, make sure that you are planning to be with us uh, on uh, Sunday, 
uh, each Sunday, but make it especially that you'll be with us on that 26th. Brother John Poo Malone um, and Sister Lydia will be uh, facilitating the um, uh, uh, the uh, the um, social, and we hope that all young, all of our young adults, eighteen to thirty nine, will make plans on coming and being a part of of that. The forty seventh National Jail and Prison Workshop Planning Meeting um, is scheduled for Monday. January the 27th at 6 p.m. want to give thanks to all of the uh, sisters and, and uh, visitors. Um, yesterday, they've got the mailings all ready to go, and we want to say praise the Lord, and thanks be unto God and uh, the Lord uh, shine upon uh, the, the mailing community. Uh, committee. They did an outstanding job, and we're thankful to God uh, for that. The Village Learning Center after school ministry is still taking applications. Parents, please register your students for the winter session, pre preschool through the eighth grade. Um, there are also a variety of volunteer opportunities. The after-school program is open Monday through Thursday uh, from 3 to 7 p.m. We asked our uh, volunteers to um, give us one day a week, the same day. Remember, you're going to re uh, develop a relationship with one of the students that the, uh, you can uh, grow with and help them to grow in their um, Christian journey as well as their academics in, um, uh, in the uh, school system. So keep that in mind. Uh, give us a call at 502 3986 and we do have one that uh, called that wants to volunteer, and we'll be making that contact with them uh, this week. So God bless you. Thank you. We need others who will step, out, step up and uh, work with our young people and uh, give them the, the love of Jesus Christ. The Kids Cafe is open on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Uh, the cafe provides a healthy meal along with physical and educational activities. We need volunteers for this as well. And so we're looking forward to many uh, of our members and those of you in radio, Facebook Live, um, make sure that you... Join with us and help us to uh, get to meet and work with the youth of our neighborhood. The food and clothing ministry will be available for our neighbors on the second and fourth Thursdays. The next date uh, is January the 23rd, uh, a week from today. So you, you know that uh, we're here to serve in the name of the Lord our God. The area-wide news, the Southwestern Christian College Spring uh, Concert Tour will be taking place in Louisville uh, during the month of March, March the 12th, um, uh, and uh, the... Uh, the committee is working out uh, uh, details for lodging and uh, uh, concert venue. Please consider assisting by uh, sponsoring a one-night stay 
at local um, uh, hotel. Uh, so make sure you, if you can do that, uh, make sure you let um, uh, someone from the committee know Midwest. Make sure you get with Sister uh, Deborah McGill. Praise be unto God. Now, the baseball, baseball, uh, some the West Louisville baseball is taking applications right now. Make sure you uh, come and uh, uh, get um, them registered. Uh, Midwest, uh, you can contact Brother Howard Jones and uh, uh, anyone on the West Louisville uh, um, uh, uh, baseball committee. Uh, you can go on their Facebook uh, they, and their um, uh, website, uh, the West Louisville Baseball. You you go and look that up. Get get the young men and young women uh, signed up for baseball. It'll teach them a great deal of things uh, uh, for their goods. So you make sure that that's what you do. Praise be unto God. Um, we are we're thankful that uh, um, for those that are watching with us, uh, we have uh, uh, brother um, uh, uh, E. Melto Solon, uh, there in the Philippines, watching us. He says he's up, uh, uh, it's being broadcast in the Philippines this morning. May God continue to bless your all's ministry. I see the great work that you all are doing there in the Philippines. And may our God continue to bless the kingdom uh, of God there in the Philippines. Uh, the church of Christ is all over the world. And that's what God intends for it to be. It is to take the gospel to the whole world. So God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much for joining with us. We want to remember our sick and shut in. Um, we want to re remember... Uh, Sister Beverly Blanson, Sister Terry Clay, Sister Savannah Johnson, Sister Don Marie Sizemore, uh, Brother Johnny Miles, and uh, uh, Brother Angelo Pendergrass. Pray also for our shut in, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan. Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Vivian Wakefield, and Sister Mary Wood. Uh, also pray for Brother James Frazier and continue to pray for Sister Bertha Frazier and Sister Dorothy Miles and uh, the family as they uh, take care of uh, their their husbands and and father so we know that god is is able also we want to remember those pray for those who are going through dialysis and radiation chemotherapy um, and uh, special treatments to the eyes uh, hands uh, and other limbs um want to remember our dear friends uh, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler, uh, Sister Rita Kamishi, Sister Sarah, and Sister um, Beverly Bledsoe, Sister Angela, Anya Lawson, and Sister Latanya Johnson. Pray also for brothers Jasper Crenshaw. Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, um, 
Brother Frederick Hines, and uh, pray uh, for, uh, amen, uh, Brother Marvin Stevenson uh, Jr., uh, amen. Pray for these and ask God to be with them. want to give thanks um, to those who supported the radio ministry this week. Uh, Sister Linda Bird, uh, Brother Alvesta Curry, uh, Brother Sister Jacqueline Hallman, um, Brother James Malone, Sister Cynthia Purvis, Brother Kevin Stevenson, uh, Sister Joey Stevenson, Sister Trinita Thomas, Sister Elaine Watts, uh, and our dear friends, uh, um, uh, uh, Sister Nancy Mormon and uh, um, uh, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi. Thank you all for blessing, for blessing uh, us and um, may God uh, be, be with you uh, richly. Praise be unto God. Would you bow with me? Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for being the God to whom you are, a God of, of great mercy, great in grace. Oh, Lord, how we need you every day. We thank you for touching us and waking us up this morning. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, we bring our sick, our shut-in, those going through special treatments. We ask that you would heal them, give them what they need to endure and the patience to wait on the Lord. Father, we bring to before you all who have gotten up this morning to hear a word from the Lord. And I pray that your servant will teach from the book of God that I add not to it nor take away from it, but that I may preach and present your word as your word and that the people would receive your word as your word. Oh, Lord, we pray that you would go to the hospitals, nursing homes, into the sick places and jail houses and other locations where the love of Jesus needs to be seen on this day. I pray for them. Oh, Lord, our God, have mercy upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Now, let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms. The first division, the book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it's in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in this season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. 
For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse number 3, the Bible, the Word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the... Blessed is the man that is... Um, well, listen, I'm going to, have to open my Bible. My, my, my mind is on several things. I can't even quote that scripture today. Praise be unto God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be, uh, be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are they that are persecuted. Uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now let's open your Bibles to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, the 12th chapter, and the verse is 2. The word of the Lord says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Thursday, January the 16th, 2020, our daily devotion entitled God's Eternal perspective. Big assignments require big character. God will give you a responsibility in proportion to the size of your character. In Bible times, a person's name represented his character. To know someone's name was to know what the person was like. That's why God changed the name of some when he transformed their character. For example, the Lord wanted to bless all the nations of the earth through Abram. Yet Abram's character was too weak for such a great task. God said he would make Abram's name great so that he would make him a blessing to future generations. Then over the next 25 years, God developed Abraham's 
character to match the name he had given him. God sees, God sees your life from his eternal perspective. He will take whatever time is necessary to grow you, to grow your character, to match his assignment for you. If you have not received a divine commission lately, it may be that your character needs maturing. Are you, are you impatient to begin your work before God has refined your character? A small character will fail in a large responsibility every time. Don't be too hasty to get to, to the work that God is wanting you to do. Character building can be long and painful. It took 25 years before God entrusted Abraham with his first son and set in motion the establishment of the nation of Israel. Yet God was true to his word. And thousands of years later, people continue to be blessed by the account of Abraham's life and by his descendant, Jesus Christ. How is God building your character? Do you, do you sense uh, he has a task uh, for you that will require a far greater man or woman that you presently are? Will you yield to God as he works in your life? to prepare you for your next assignment that he has for eternity. And so is the readings of the book of God, the book of Matthew, the, the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Matthew, uh, the fifth chapter, verses 3 through 12. And here, in the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter, and the verse is 2. Now, let's open up your Bibles to the featured study found in the book of uh, Hebrews, the ninth chapter. This morning we'll begin reading at verse number 23. The Bible, the word of God says, by such means, therefore, it was necessary for the earthly copies of the heavenly things be purified. But the actual heavenly things themselves require far better and nobler sacrifice than these. For Christ the Messiah has not entered into a sanctuary made with human hands, only a copy and pattern and type 
of the true one, but he has entered into heaven itself now to be a uh, now to appear in the very presence of God on our behalf. Nor did he enter into the heavenly sanctuary to offer himself regularly again and again as the high priest enters the holy of holies every year uh, with blood not his own. For then would he offer, often rather, have made to suffer over and over again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, but as it now is, he has once uh, for all at the consummation and close of the ages appeared to put away and abolish sin by his sacrifice of himself. And uh, just as it is appointed for man once to die, and after that uh, the certain judgment, even so it is that Christ, having been offered to take uh, upon himself and bear as a burden, the sins of many once and once for all will appear a second time not, not to carry any burden of sin nor to deal with sin, but to bring uh, to full salvation those who are eagerly constantly and patiently waiting for the and expecting him. Verse um, 23 through 28. This is one of the great passages of the scripture that has a bottomless reservoir of meaning. It presents Jesus Christ as the perfect sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. The one thing man needs to face up to is this one thing. He and his world are sinful and imperfect. He, man, and his world die and waste away. Therefore, man needs to have his sins cleansed and taken away. In order to stand before the holy and perfect God, man must uh, somehow be cleansed of sin and imperfection and be counted as perfect. How is this? How is this possible when everybody, everything upon this earth is corruptible? and is dying, there is only one answer, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, by the sacrifice which our Messiah has made for man. Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. My brothers and sisters, 
He says in verse 23, by such means, therefore it is ne it was necessary for the earthly, that is copies of the heavenly things be purified. But the actual heavenly things themselves required far better and nobler sacrifice than these earthly. For Christ Jesus, the Messiah, has not entered into a sanctuary made with human hands, only a copy, amen, and pattern and type of the true one. But he has entered into heavenly, uh, heaven itself, now to appear in the very presence of God. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ purifies everything, even the very things of heaven. Jesus provides a, a man universal redemption for every person. It was absolutely necessary that earthly sanctuaries and worships be purified with blood. And it is also absolutely necessary that the heavenly sanctuary and worship be purified with the blood of the sovereign Lord. Why? Why is this, you ask? Well, why does anything in heaven need to be cleansed and purified? Why, why, you ask? It is not because anything in heaven is sinful and unclean. It is not. Heaven is heaven. It is perfect and eternal. It is not because uh, the way a man into heaven must be, co must be covered and embroiled with blood in order to cover man's, amen, God needed the amen, someone to cleanse man in order for man to be able to come into the presence of holy God. It took, it took the blood. It took the blood. And my brothers and sisters, this is crucial for us to understand. It is the absolute truth, for it shows how great the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ is. And how great it is in the eyes and mind of God. It is so great that God has insisted that the blood of his son be used to cover everything throughout the whole universe, both of the physical and the spiritual world both the physical and spiritual dimensions. The blood of his son's dear life covers every place that man shall ever go and everything that man should ever touch. Serves as a symbol, a, a symbolic image. Yes, 
but a picture of the true, uh, of the truth. Nevertheless, it is the truth. Jesus, blood covers everything. Brothers and sisters, for man shall be, shall never be acceptable to the, uh, to the God apart from the sacrificial death and the blood of God's dear son. Therefore, it is an absolute necessity that each of us receive the cleansing from the, of the blood of Jesus our Christ. Now let's see if we can find that in the scripture. Because see, as I often share with you, it's, it's imperative that we are able to scripturalize everything. I want you to run with me to the book of Titus. Would you do that? Go to the book of Titus. The book of Titus. The book of Titus, the third chapter. Here's what the word of the Lord says. He says for in verse number three, Titus chapter three, and verse 3, <clears throat> for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be heirs according to the hope of eternal life. There must be a washing the purifying, washing of the blood of Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, in the book of um, 1 Corinthians, the chapter is 6. The Bible says, verse 19, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. You were bought by the precious blood of Jesus, my brothers and my sisters. He says in verse number nine, he says, know ye, know ye not that, uh, that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolatry, nor fornicators, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers and extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But now 
ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, and ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. I want you to know that, amen, God had to wash away our sins. Jesus said, a man must be born again. Amen. It puzzled Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, Lord, how can a man, when he is old, enter in the second time into his mother's womb? And when he is old, Jesus said, Nicodemus, 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 a man must be, uh, except a man be born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. My brothers and sisters, Jesus had to take the precious blood of his own blood to die for you and for me. That's what God, that's what God would have us to know. You have a perfect sacrifice that has been made in your, in your behalf. And uh, Hebrews 9 and verse 14, it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. My brothers and sisters, John, the beloved of Jesus, the beloved of Jesus, said in 1 John 1, 7, But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all. Praise be unto God. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. And uh, we are thankful that God has blessed you and I to live in the age of Jesus Christ's precious blood, cleansing us from our sins going to open up the prayer lines now. And if you would like to have, if you would like to uh, have prayer, you give us a call at 571-1240. 571-1240. And uh, we'll pray with you, and we'll pray for you, that our God may bless your life and the life of those. Praise God. Hello, caller. This is uh, uh, Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? I am blessed and highly favored. How is Sister Mormon this morning? I am blessed and highly favored and just thanking God for what he has already done. Amen, amen. What he's doing right now and for what he's going to do because I've got his word and I've got his promise. Praise the Lord. I just stand on his word, Pastor, when I can't stand on my feet and that's good news. Yes, that's real good news. Regardless of my circumstances. Amen. I'd like to have prayer for you and your wife and family and for all the ones that you pray for. 
run for this morning. Yes. Yes. Have prayer for all our caregivers because we got so many people sick with the flu, uh, 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 uh virus that uh, we 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 just got. Amen. Got the sick, taking care of the sick. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so we we pray for pray for special prayer for them. And I'd like to have prayer for all the morning meditation listeners, for the ones that's not able to call in for one reason or another. We thank God for the opportunity. That's right. That's and right. To call in for them. I'd like to have prayer for that young, that young lady that called in yesterday. Yes. If you've ever been through that, you know exactly how she feels. Amen. Thank you for, for her. And I'd like to have prayer for all the was in recovery. God is able to do anything but fail. That's Brother right. Brother family, uh, Brother John Anderson and family, for Sister uh, Bertha Jones and family, for Sister uh, Tanya Yates and family, for Brother Randolph and Jacqueline Harris and family, and you have a great day. And I love you. Praise be unto God. Sister Mil uh, Margaret uh, uh, Pilgrim is, is asking us to pray for uh, her mother-in-law and uh, all her caregivers. She's bedridden. And pray for Brother James, uh, his sister, uh, uh, and thank God for uh, all of you. Uh, Sister Anda Sharp is asking us to pray for her and uh, her family. Uh, Sister Rita and Brother David Kamishi, pray for our uh, uh, lovely and blessed uh, Sister Mormon, amen, uh, who blesses the group uh, uh, and uh, so many all the time to be richly blessed. Praise one and praise be unto God. Thank you for that. Uh, we are, um, uh, um, we're just thankful. Uh, I shared with you that we got a group from uh, um, uh, the Philippines. Uh, Brother Salon is, is, uh, is watching us this morning. Welcome, my brother. God bless you. Uh, we also have uh, one of my schoolmates there at Austin. Austin P., uh, my Sister Patricia Menefield Hartley. Uh, praise God. Uh, up there, I, I assume you're still in, in the Chattanooga uh, home uh, there. So God bless you. May he keep you all so very, very much. Uh, God, would you bow with me? Dear God and Father, as we come before you once again, we bring every person who will listen to the morning meditation with God. I pray that uh, we all can understand how blessed we are because of the blood that Jesus shed uh, there on Golgotha's hill. We pray, O oh God, that you would be with every person. Be with Sister Sharp and 
be with uh, uh, Sister Wester and all of those who ask for prayer. Thank you. Thank you for uh, watching over uh, those that are sick in their homes and the hospitals and all over. We thank you and praise your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you. I look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until, until then, know this. Our God loves you and so do I.